Bob Brady Heastan. Brady, how are you? Dude, living the dream. How are you guys? Not too bad. We're uh, here in Florida. You're in Vegas. Uh, just the start. I always ask this. It's just the start uh, of fight week. Uh, do you try to keep them all the same, or do you try to kind of mix it up a little just to get through the next couple days? You know, luckily it's all been in Vegas for me, so I, I've been keeping it pretty pretty much the same. I got a good schedule, weight cut, all that good stuff. But I, I'm not too set in, like, a specific routine. I don't, like, have... Um, uh, like issues with like a little bit of change here and there is it better that it is always there you know i always you know when we talk to fighters it's like this is a work week it's not you know you're not there to have fun you you need to get ready and be prepared for saturday but if you're in a different place if you're in dublin if you're in rio you know you may be more apt to to go and experience or look but if you keep going to vegas that's probably better right for sure hey do you do you mind if we do the call this again because i keep hearing the echo sure Okay. Um, I'll call you guys back. Okay. Um, we don't want that because they barely want to hear Matt the first time. Yeah. Well, I don't know who Matt is, but. Um, Matt would be Major Matt Mason. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I can't believe you paid that much for that. Yeah. That's amazing. It's one of my stupider purchases. Well, what, what was it about that that made it so, like, what did you fans out about outer space? Were you interested in, like, uh, the no. galaxy and, like, no. traveling to the moon? No. Well, why would you idolize the guy? Back. At first, I didn't idolize anything. All right, let's, uh, let's go back to the phone lines. Uh, Brady, you back? Yeah, yeah. Is that better? There's a little echo, but I'll just try to deal with it. Okay. It, it's not modern technology. This is old school FCC. So, you know, they're, they're listening in to make sure everything. <laughs> so, um, hey, nothing about a little old school. Yeah. No, nope, for sure. I know it's been a while, you know, since your last fight. But what I want to talk about is not necessarily the reasons for it, more just the length. You know, what do you do? How do you get through? You know, a lot of fans don't understand that you don't fight, you don't make money. Uh, how do you get through that process? You know, yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of aspects to it. Like, obviously, the money is the hard part. I, luckily, I set myself up. I bought a house, turned it, do, turned it into a duplex. And then, so my monthly expenses are fairly low. So I was able just to, uh, you know, survive off of that. But, you know, mentally, it was just like, I'm still in the gym all the time. Either if I'm not recovering from the injury, I'm training for an upcoming fight. So just making sure that mentally I'm still in the game, I'm still improving, um, it makes me feel a little bit better. And I think that's what's going to show on Saturday is that I'm a new fighter, I'm a little bit older, a little bit wiser, and I'm going to be better out there. So, so Brady, I'm, I'm on your Instagram, and, I'm, and I see a picture of you sitting on a couch, and behind you is the ultimate, Probably well, one of the, original, one the original UFC ultimate fighting um, logo. What does that mean to you t today? Does, does the UFC still represent the same thing as what I think of when I see this image? I think of just Neanderthals, just animals that would just turn loose and just run to the center and just first one to fall loses and, and it's over, you know, where now it's become such a sport and it's so technical that, you know, it's you, you expose people to weaknesses and you have a game plan and you just go after that one strategy. Does the logo still mean the same to you today as it did then? Um, no, I think it's a little different. I, you know, I, I view it almost like the NFL. It's like the pinnacle. You know, martial arts is actually a sport now, and I grew up if, with it being a sport, and, like, obviously we're in there getting a fight. That's why I like it. But I, I, I look at the UFC as the pinnacle, the best of the best, not just, like, wild animals. These are, like, savage athletes, the best of the best, and, I, you know, that being up there is just proving that I'm one of those guys. That's why... I think um, I have it as my profile picture because I think it just means a lot. Now, you, you know what's funny is as, a, as the only person still covering the UFC that covered the UFC back when it was this logo, I covered the UFC at UFC 1. Um, then 300, at, 100. Well, at 300, it was funny. They, they all went around trying to see who was at 100, 200, and 300. And I stuck up the finger, you know, the number one. So to see a younger person, um, you know, liking that logo from back in the day. Awesome. I, I don't smile often. Right yeah. now, this is like, <laughs> this is pretty cool. It's awesome. That's awesome. How, how has the sport changed for you? It's it yeah. crazy that you're still in it, interviewing guys every every you know year but i'm sure it's changed so much for you yeah it, it, it has and and it's changed for the good and some for the bad 
um, you know, from a media standpoint. You know, back in the day, you know, the MMA world, the UFC needed the media. Um, the access, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, as it's continued on, you know, it's, it's not as much needed as it was back then. Um, you know, where before, you know, you make a phone call, and I still can, call Chuck Liddell, call Randy Couture. Um, you can't do that with Conor McGregor or John Jones. Um, no, there's so much coverage nowadays, huh? Exactly. You know, but you, you beat the streets. You, you go to, you know, people have asked me, you know, and this is more about talking to you than, you know, for, for my stuff. But, you know, people say, why do you still go? You know, like I said. Started at one eleven was the first one I attended with uh, Mark Coleman, and, it, and it's because you have to, because you have to be there all the time. You know, yeah, it's easy, and a lot of people don't go, and they sit in the studio, they do a radio show, they they get a fighter on, and they talk about it. You still have to go, you still have to experience it, and and I don't tell this story per se on air a lot, but Nico Price is a very good friend of mine. That part isn't the part that I, I don't talk about, and I saw him down in Fort Lauderdale at a BKFC, and I said dude, how come you don't return my call? And he goes, what do you mean? You haven't been calling me. I'd know if you called me. And then I showed him. He goes, oh, crap, that's you? So, you know, it's that face thing, you know, to keep, you know, uh, conversations going and keeping that personal thing like it was back in the day. Back in the day, we would oh, for sure that makes sense. we would walk through the casino, the fights on Saturday. You know, Tito's doing laps through Mandalay Bay and stops by and just hangs out and, you know, it's just talking. It's not necessarily even a media thing. It's a conversation thing. That's why I call what we're doing and what you and I are doing. It's not an interview. We're just doing a chat. I want it to be just a chat talking about you getting prepared, who Brady is, you know, what makes Brady tick. Not necessarily all about fighting. You know, I want fans to get to know Brady, the person, not necessarily Brady, the fighter. And, and Brady, let me just interject like before you respond. You know, that's, I think that's – I've been with Randy for 10 years or more. Um, that's what makes him genuine, man. He goes in the locker rooms. He talks to the rookies. The, all the press is over with the superstars and the ones that are already established, already have all the accolades. And Randy's in the locker room with the guys that don't get the love and don't get the publicity. And he just gets to know them. And, and he shares their story. So he gets just as excited talking to you right now that he would if Conor McGregor called. Actually, he would rather talk to you yeah. probably. I will talk to Conor McGregor. Of the, because of the antics and the craziness of how it changes sport from where the world views what the UFC is, what – the throwing the the energy drink cans in the crowd and the disrespect. So, um, you are seeing so valuable. You, seeing you with that logo yeah. r- really is it, it takes heart. me back to yeah. you know the the po- you know, like I have some of these old posters. I'll see if I can grab one for you and, and send it to you because it you'd appreciate it where yeah. a lot of the young fighters you know and it's not a, a knock on them it's just you know they're not thinking ufc 10 ufc 12 they're thinking ufc 301 right even though you know 303 is coming up 301 just happened so yeah you know from a, a very old uh, guy seeing you sitting with that yeah. with that logo is pretty cool for me it's dope hell yeah well it's an honor getting interviewed from one of the old Oh, gee, the UFC, Randy Harris. When I was called that by Dana White, <laughs> I had to ask Matt, what does that stand for? He didn't I, I, I don't even, is that old guy? <laughs> well, they, 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 when Dana called you that, I looked at him, I was like, whoa, that's the greatest honor he could have got. Okay, <laughs> it's not about me. Um, what I am curious about is for your, your stint on The Ultimate Fighter. What were you able to take from that experience and still be able to use that today? You know, I think a big thing I learned from the Ultimate Fighter, I've been asked that question a lot, but I think it's changed my answer. I think the biggest thing I learned is everyone's just another person out there. You know, I fought in the regional scene in Spokane and, like, didn't venture out a whole lot before the Ultimate Fighter, but as soon as I got on the Ultimate Fighter, I realized, like, once I beat Josh Riddinghouse, who was a big name from my town, and then I beat Vince Murdoch in the first round, I just realized these are all just normal dudes. Anyone can get beat. Anyone can lose a fight. And so that gave me confidence. Cause I'm, I know how hard I work. I know how much you know, blood, sweat, and tears I put in the gym. And so any guy I go against, I have confidence in because I know he's not outworking me. Very true. Very yeah. good. You know, I'm going to ask you kind of the same question you asked me. You know, what have you noticed different? Like, you know, now, all, you know, there's trading cards. You know, now I know they've been out for a couple of years, but it's still kind of new. Or, you know, seeing your name on ESPN as an MMA fighter, we're all used to, you know, baseball and, you know, the NBA finals are this weekend. But to see that scroll on the bottom now and showing your name and your fight coming up on Saturday, what does that mean, you know, to you? You know, it's just, 
it's uh, I guess it's validation of a lot of work. You know, I I've always wanted to be a professional athlete, and you know, I'm, I'm a 135er, so I was never big enough for football, never big enough for like high jump. I wasn't the fastest guy, but I could fight, and so being able to be on ESPN is is huge, and to be a part of a sport, you know. It came a long way, but I feel like it has even farther to go. So I think as the sports grows and I grow up in the sport, we're going to end up being like the NFL. We're going to be like these big name organizations, and it's going to be worldwide. And it's fucking badass to be a part of something like that. He said trucking, just for people that, that, that are you know paying attention. He said trucking, T-R-U-C-K-I-N-G. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Bray, so um, <laughs> look, look, man. uh <sighs> Bro, I'm just so proud. Like, I, I think this is what the sport is about, you know. And, and you see it at this level because Randy got in so early. I got in early as well, just as a fan. But, you know, it, it to see it what it's become it, it, and see you guys carry on the tradition of it, it's awesome, man. To see that respect. And uh, uh, I think nothing but the world of you, man. Like, I'm, I'm proud you're living your dream, bro. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wait, it's an honor to be interviewed by some guys like you guys because you guys are seem like big fans. Obviously, been around for a while, so it's it's an honor for sure. Where does the name Bam Bam come from? So um, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but I started when I was a little bit younger. So I started jiu-jitsu when I was thirteen, first cage fight when I was sixteen, and so I've always been kind of the younger guy in the sport. And so I trained with a lot of older guys just because even when I was coming up, it was more like you know you get done wrestling and then you go into fighting. So there wasn't a lot of guys my age in the gym. Um, and so I would train and I would, I would, uh, be fighting with these, like these pro fighters. And one of the ladies in the gym would call me Bam Bam because I was, you know, a young guy, kind of like, you know, Bam Bam from the Flintstones. I was beating up all these dinosaurs. <laughs> and so that's where it kind of got in. Stuck, so I'm keeping with it. I, I like it. And now he, he was beating up dinosaurs before, and now he's talking to one right now on the radio. So, so it all works out well. What's the, what's the craziest, strangest, funniest thing that's ever happened with you, to you, or involving you, you know, in a fight? In a fight? Like an actual fight? Yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I, I guess, you know, my finale at Tough was a pretty weird one. You know, me, me and Ricky were, went at it. We went to war. And he's always like, He's always making weird gestures. He's always going all crazy. And so just seeing a person do that and then me punching him in the face and then doing it again. <laughs> Dude, this guy's a freak. I would punch him in the face and 